you know, I was like, oh my God, this is like, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty, it's a good indicator, but you have to proceed with caution. This is the upgraded, updated version of the previous should I insist on PCR test. So again, um, for those who haven't watched it, I guess you can see the rerun. But for those who have already watched it, I made it shorter and I edited it. I didn't know what I was doing and earlier as a YouTuber. So now I know how to edit videos. So <laughs> thanks for being patient. Uh, so please enjoy. Um, so it's the, the rerun but updated version. After this, so if you have already watched it, you can just go down to about five and a half minutes and then you can, um, I'll have the conclusion. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. I wasn't actually sure if how effective it was. I actually did a little bit of like just run through a you know, run through a calculation and then it's pretty, pretty, it's a good indicator, but you have to proceed with caution. So I just wanted to share about this a little bit. So let me tell you a little bit about this. So let me actually go to the screen share. Let's say um, the assumption, let's say a typical PCR, the polymerase chain reaction test uh, can tell you the presence of, you know, you replicate uh, the RNA particular, you know, can be any virus, but anyways, so uh, you use polymerase chain reaction and then um, you can identify, let's say nine out of the 10 infected cases, you can actually correctly identify. So 10% of the time, let's say, you know, one out of 10 times you would miss, but that part is fine as long as it's you know, accurately um, identify the the uh, infection nine out of ten times. It's pretty good. It's ninety percent you know accurate, so to speak. And then also, um, if you are not infected, so you are actually not infected, which probably most of you guys are probably you know you're worried, but probably not really infected. So, but the PCR generally, you know, somewhere between 20 to 30%, it, you know, it identifies you as infected, but falsely identify you as infected. So it's what we call false positive. So now, so two out of 10 times, so 20% of the time, it would be identifying you as a, as a infected case, uh, although you, you are, toward, you know, you are not infected. So false positive be 20%. Typical false positive is ranges somewhere between the 20 to 30%. So I just I use lower numbers. So, you know, it's more accurate test. I've just wanted to do a little bit more conservatively. So 20% false positive and then 10% false negative with out of 10 times you would miss. But that part is not that important if you're worried about, you know, being identified as positive and, uh, and then you're infected. But let's say it's recent numbers. I just came up with numbers, but, you know, I just say about 100, let's say. So this 100 patients who are actually infected, 9 out of 10 times, which makes it 90, all right? And then, you know, then 10 people, you know, negative, although they are positive, but then total, they are, total number of patients are 100. But let's say if you're not infected, which is most of the, you know, time you are not. If you look at the, you know, this recent um, uh, pandemic, and then if you look at the actual number, you know, it's a lot of people got infected, but if you look at the total population, so the number of people who are actually infected, and assuming the number of infections is correct, it's not, in this particular case, I just used 10 times of the people who are infected would be probably appropriate. So 10% of the people is actually, you know, gets infected, you know, so I just pick a number 1,000, just 10 times as big as 100. So now, out of 1,000 people who are not infected, 20% uh, false positive would identify 200 people being positive for the test. So which makes it like, so if, if you look at total number of people uh, who are identified as, you know, all infected, positive, so that would be total of 290. What does it mean? Out of 200, so 90 people who are truly infected and are being identified as infected, and you have total number of 290 people who are identified as positive. So 90 divided by 290, right? And guess what? This is roughly about 0 0.3, right? It's roughly about 0 0.31 or so, I think. So in that case, even if you are being identified as you're being positive for infection, it's about a 30% chance that you're actually truly infected because of the sheer number of people who are tested. So again, and that's why you, you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do PCR tests lightly 
just because you know, if you actually increase the number of total people, then that would increase this number as well. And then, so ch again, your chances of you correctly being identified as positive, although you might actually see it as positive, but you may not be. But again, you know, but in terms of containing the uh, the infection, uh, spreading um, the infection, and you really want to be conservative. So, of course, if you are being identified as positive uh, for infection, then you want to contain yourself. You don't want to go elsewhere, and you want to make sure that you don't infect others, even though you may not be, but you want to make sure to contain it because, again, it's hugely important that isolate yourself for the time being so that you know, just in case you're infected, you don't infect others. But anyways, I just wanted to tell you uh, this fact. So, so again, PCR, is it effective? It's probably effective to contain the uh, likely cases of pandemic itself. But, you know, there are likely cases that you may actually not be carrying that, that particular virus. Some people ask 20% false positive normal of 10% false negative normal. I would say those are typical numbers. So when I go back to my uh, graduate school days, you know, when you look back and when you do reverse transcriptase experiment, like these false positive and false negatives really depends on the person running the testing. Think that people are either like very well experienced or certified or whatever. But in reality, there are always people who can't do it. So even if how careful the person is, sometimes it just doesn't work. For example, if you don't scrape the correct place, your virus may just not be there. Anyways, if you only have a little bit of the virus and you're supposed to be able to, to amplify those genes, but if the gene is not scraped, when you scrape the throat or scrape the nose or wherever the sample is taken, if the gene is not there, it's not going to be amplified. So keep that in mind. Again, it really depends on the experimenters. Like in my case, when I was in grad school, there were always an undergraduate student who was given a positive control, meaning particular gene is there, and they were asked to use rever reverse transcriptase, and they make cDNA, and make complement copies, and just make lots and lots of amplified genes. But knowing that all they have to do is make reverse transcriptase, make cDNA, make lots and lots of copies of those. And somehow the student ends up getting nothing. So even if you give them that gene, sometimes they just don't get it. And that's what the false negative is. And it does happen. And, but it really depends on the person. These are the important part that people probably should know. These tests are not binary results. I mean, the results are binary. So basically it means either you have it or you don't have it. But in reality, there are four domains. In this case, test says you have it, but you don't. Or test says it's, you don't have it, but you have it. And then you really have it and test said so. And if you don't have it and test said so. So there are four possibilities. So these are the part that you have to be careful about. When you are actually tested negative, people will say, I feel so relieved you don't have it. The test says you don't have it, but you may have it. That's the problem. Let's say in this model case, it's 10% false negative. One out of 10 times may not be able to. It could be 99 to 1, but again, really depends. But we can't take the chance. Even people who are competent in science often think that these are like whether you have it or you don't. But test is not 100%. So again, keep that in mind. When you have negative results, more power to you, and I, I, mean, I think it's good, uh, that you, you know, test as negative. But again, you still want to contain yourself for two weeks, minimize the exposure to others, and that would be probably the right thing to do. So keep that in mind. Just because the test is negative, it doesn't mean that you have a free pass to go other places. This is not the time to take that chance. Please be mindful. Yes, you, know, you feel relieved, and I get that. But again, let's be cautious and proceed with caution. So let's contain ourselves. And if we do that for next two weeks or so, the things will start getting much better. Again, remember, if you just stick around for 14 days inside without exposure, it's hard to do. But let's be cautious. Let's stay home. Thank you very much for watching.